there are quite a number of you here also already uh, that uh, you have known him the best among the, the students on the on the program as a whole. But Tulani is one of those people that really transcended also um, years. I think whoever he met, he became a friend with, colleague with. So he really, I think, worked with and got to know and collaborated uh, together with many people across many, many years. So, um, you know, I think that for me speaks to, to his great qualities, the first of which would be his warmth as, as a human being. Um, his his, his um, smile, his, his presence, you know, I suppose the fact that he became a leader of, of a very, very precarious pro-democracy movement shows his ability to really reach out, his ability to, to bring people together. Um, in a way, no one, I think, that met him, that was in his presence, had been left untouched. There was just this uh, energy that, that he exudes and 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 that, in a sense, uh, is one of the great things that we we'll miss about him, but also remember and admire him for. I I also think that what I remember about him is um, is if you like a sense of urgency that uh, that he was in a sense an impatient person, but impatient in the in the best uh, possible sense of the word for me. He he always wanted to know what's next, what 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 is the what is the challenge that lies ahead, um, and uh, how does he uh, deal with that? So. The last time I saw I saw um, Tulani in person was actually in um, Banjul at the last session of the African Commission that took place there in public. And um, there was a launch. Uh, Satang is here, I think. Uh, Satang and Adem, others, he'd been involved in a book on the Gambia and democracy in the Gambia. We were at the launch together and um, Tulani was there and um, he was saying, yeah, so this is what happens next. We also need to do a book. We need to further reflect and we need to take on these issues in respect of Eswatini, his, uh, his loyalty uh, as, a, as a citizen, his loyalty to the idea of a demo, the, uh, constitutional democracy, I think transcended everything else, uh, else in his life. So, so maybe just uh, slightly harking to the second part of, of our discussion, or our deliberations together today, we also uh, thought that it would be most appropriate to institutionalize, to institute a, a memorial lecture, as we've done for for you know Julius Osega and um, um, others. We want to uh, have a memorial lecture for uh, Tulani, but that will focus on democracy in Southern Africa, and we hope to to even start it this year in the um, um, running up to the important elections in Southern Africa, among others in in Eswatini. So I, I think we all remember him for, for various things. Um, his warmth for me, his, his, his sense of immediacy, urgency, his, his sense that he needs to make a difference. He needs to take something, his commitment, his, um, and then together with that, his humility, that he, he really was a person of, of great magnitude and weight and great uh, moment, but you never had that sense of any self-importance, that sense of uh, inflatedness of ego, that for him, it was beyond ego. So, so, so a very selfless person in the in the in the deepest sense of the word, uh, an egoless person, a person then ultimately whose life really encompasses uh, that uh, um, value in in this very stark this very stark way in which in which he has to uh, uh, to find his, his his death. So our sympathy, our our uh, thoughts, our empathy, our deep condolences to everyone you know around this this virtual table. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us today. I, I thought I will also just um, uh, call on um, Professor Nkata, uh, who was also just, you know, in parenthesis, we congratulate for uh, her for also um, attaining the, the professor, the associate professorship with us. As you know, many of you have been here before. Uh, she joined us, but uh, Nkata obviously is um, assistant director. I don't know, Nkata, if you would uh, also just like to say a word or two. And then we very much like to open the floor just for anyone's uh, remembrances. And uh, as uh, Davina, we see that kind of comes to a close. We will more, move more towards the the um, issue of uh, you know strategies where Lloyd will take the lead and take us uh, forward uh, to that. So, um, uh, Kata, thanks. Thank you very much, Franz, and uh, good day to everyone. <clears throat> um, I think I won't be long because uh, a lot of what I would say is part of what <clears throat> Prof has already mentioned. Um, the first thing for me being that it's unfortunate that we are meeting in such circumstances again, because um, 
I'm excited to see all of you uh, to see the, you know, we're just reading the names and the familiar, um, the fam familiarity of the family of the HRDA is really always a pleasure, but um, it's unfortunate that we are meeting in these current circumstances. Um, death is never easy, even when you anticipate it, but it's, it's um, particularly painful when you know that it needed not happen. And when it, when it comes, you know, um, at the most inopportune time, really, um, at, at the prime of a career, at the prime of effectiveness and impact. Uh, and I think this is why it really hurts a lot for us uh, in relation to Tulani, because um, much as, as he himself often acknowledged that there was always a looming threat or possibility of, of assassination because of the cause that he, he so uh, faithfully fought for. Um, much as, as, as he, we always knew that was a possibility, but I think we, none of us ever actually thinks that such a moment will come and we, the, the, the dread of it just would not allow us to reflect on it, but here we are. Um, there is really hardly any words that we can say that would, you know, um, calm uh, the, the, the pain um, in the hearts, particularly of the family, but also of colleagues and those of us that have known him in, in ways uh, big and small. But I think, as, as Franz said, perhaps the biggest gift that we, we can ever give to Tulani's legacy is to continue championing the things that he stood up so uh, strongly for and for which he gave his life. Um, and I think in a sense of reflecting on him and, and uh, on Tulani himself, I remember the first time I met him, I just thought um, he's, he's such an, he was such an easygoing guy that you would take him for granted. You wouldn't really, you wouldn't, for me, it was difficult to reconcile his personality, his easygoing personality and friendly and laughing and, you know, uh, taking life, being very cordial to the stubbornness with which he was committed to the cause of democracy and confronting something that is actually, you know, openly dangerous. It was as if it was two different people when he was committed to the mission of democracy and fighting for its people in Switzerland. And when he was just Tulani, the person, the, the, the friendly, easygoing person who looks very much gentle and, and soft-spoken. So I look at him as really um, epitomizing the everyday advocate that we seek to have in our respective countries and our professions, that, that uh, we are committed to a cause, that we are paying a price for the cause, for the change or that we desire, but especially that the cause does not change us uh, because it did not change the good person that he was, the, 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 the human being he was stayed steadfast in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of all the wild and nasty things that, uh, that were coming up his way because of um, the fight for democracy. So I really, um, yeah, I stand, you know, in a position of feeling, um, that we we look up to Tulani and to the things that he committed himself to and feel inspired that we can still do more. But we also mourn the fact that this didn't need to happen. And in the next session, and as we listen to everyone else, I believe that we can find a way of, I hesitate to say saying that this doesn't happen anymore, but that we can in some way be able to make sense and meaning and value out of the tragedy that uh, we face. Yeah. I think I will just join uh, with France in saying that overall, we hope that this is an opportunity for us to, to mourn together, to share our reflections, also to reflect on the good times that we, we had with Tulani, but um, also to be more you know, concrete in maybe recommendations of how as a community, as a family, um, we can respond meaningfully to the current crisis. So that's why I would leave it. And um, I, I think, then this opens the floor for those of us who have some uh, reflections on our, you know, um, our relationship, knowledge, experience um, with Tulani, and just after that, then we'll move on to the next session. Thank you.
So I see that there are some hands that uh, they Sabelo is uh, has the hand up. Um, Lloyd, can I? Is is a queue moderating or should we just start? I think we can oh, start with. Yeah, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. We can start with Sabelo and Tarisai, please, Sabelo. Um, I would like to take this opportunity of uh, greeting all of you. Um, I have a short statement that I've prepared, uh, but before I do that, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, Professor Felion, um, who has actually shaped uh, most of us um, in this platform. Um, I have known Tulane Masego since my university years. Um, he was my senior uh, at the University of Swaziland and the president of the Student Representative Council. Uh, in the 1990s, he led a hunger strike for 33 days, demanding justice after he and other members of the Student Representative Council were expelled from the University of Swaziland for demanding quality and affordable education. Um, I have I'm going to make use of the word, um, uh, the name of the country is Swaziland uh, and, and not Eswatini. And uh, for the simple reason that when the king decided to unilaterally change this name, uh, Tulane was one of those who actually went to court uh, to challenge uh, that unilateral decision uh, because he was one person who was seeking justice and wanted to make sure that the rule of law is upheld at all times. Now, Tulane led a march to, um, to the king's palace. And for the first time, he came face to face with King Mswati III and stated clearly that uh, he was prepared to die uh, than to see injustice in, in, Swat in Swaziland. Uh, when Tulane spoke to the king, uh, who was and still is uh, the chancellor of the University of Swaziland, uh, I really feared as a person uh, that he was not going to live long um, because he was really challenging uh, the powers um, that were in Swaziland. Um, his life uh, journey was actually shaped by his resolute character of being an authentic human rights defender. And I believe that you will agree with me um, that he was um, an authentic human rights defender. And for his LLB thesis, Tulane wrote um, on the injustice of his community, including his own family uh, that suffered um, because of uh, unlawful evictions uh, in Swaziland. After completing, his LL after completing my LLM uh, at UP, um, around 2001, uh, Tulane and his business partner, uh, Mr. Shulbane, called me for a meeting on a Saturday afternoon, and they actually hired me on the spot as their professional assistant. It was during this time that I worked with uh, Tulane um, uh, as he defended those whose rights were violated uh, by the government of Swaziland. Um, chief among these uh, was defending uh, the late uh, president of uh, Pudemo, the People's United Democratic Movement, movement uh, Mr. Mario Masugu. Tulani was a born human rights defender and not even the Swazi regime could take away uh, uh, this from him. I was also privileged that uh, after my uh, LLM, um, I undertook a fellowship at the Institute for Human Rights and development uh, in Africa in the Gambia, where I actually researched on a case brief uh, that was aimed at challenging the Draconian King's proclamation to the nation of 1973. Uh, this, um, declare, this proclamation actually made um, the King to assume supreme authority and banned all political parties uh, in Swaziland. Having concluded the brief, a decision had to be taken on which organization was to pursue this case at the African Commission. And there was no doubt that Lawyers for Human Rights uh, was the best placed uh, organization to undertake this task. And Tulani was part of the Lawyers for Human Rights. He, in fact, he was the founding member 
of Lawyers for Human Rights, Swaziland, um, and they took up the case. Now, Tulani, as I know him, um, was ready to take up the reins. He was ready to face the king. He was ready to face um, the government of Swaziland in challenging uh, this draconian law. Uh, with the assistance of the um, uh, International Commission of Juris, uh, Kenya, um, Tulani, for the first time, attended the session of the African Commission um, on Human and People's Rights in the Gambia. And I was honored to accommodate him during his stay and got to know his mind, how his mind operated. Uh, Lawyers for Human Rights successfully uh, pursued this case before the commission. And as you know, before um, uh, taking up this case, um, Lawyers for Human Rights had to apply for an observer status um, before the commission, uh, which Shulane was thriving um, in the forefront. In 2002, the Institute for uh, Human Rights and Development organized the workshop on bringing communications before the African Commission. Um, uh, this was uh, at the Beggars Park in Pretoria. Uh, this is where I actually introduced uh, Tulane to Professor Haynes and Professor Filiun. And I remember very vividly um, that after they exchanged their pleasantries, um, uh, Tulane directly asked the professors um, why uh, they, they had actually turned down his uh, application for admission um, for the master's program. And this actually speaks to uh, what uh, Professor has said, that he was a, a very impatient person when he, he wanted to, to achieve something. And in this particular case, uh, he had really, um, he was pushed by his passion to learn more about human rights in order to ensure that he defends um, human rights in the in the kingdom of uh, Swaziland. Now, um, I must say that after that, Tulani reapplied and eventually got admission um, uh, to the LLM program. And I was also privileged to visit him um, as he started his LLM journey. And he actually shared with me his vision and his determination to liberate uh, the Swazi people and to defend human rights at all costs. He unfortunately, um, ladies and gentlemen, paid the price. Uh, he paid the ultimate price, the price he knew very well that he would pay for speaking the truth and standing up for what was right for the people of Swaziland. His was uh, to seek justice, to speak justice, to do justice on behalf of the people. Tulani is now gone, but his legacy lives on. He will forever be in our hearts and his human rights work will continue. May his soul rest in peace. I thank you. Thank you very much, Savelo, for uh, that beautiful tribute. Um, <clears throat> as we said at the beginning, I think we acknowledge that, you know, in our community, um, this is primarily HRDA, but a lot of us may have a lot more personal experiences, and that is part of why we are gathered here, personal relationships that, like Savelo has reflected. Uh, the only uh, ask that we have is that we try and keep it short because we don't have a lot of time. So I had asked, I had um, given Teresai. Uh, so after Teresai, please let's have Muiza and Christian. Um, then we will come back in after that. So Teresai, please. Thank you, um, uh, Prof. Mgada, and um, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to join um, in the conversation we're having today to honor our, our colleague. Uh, because of time, uh, I'll just say a, a few remarks. Uh, as the uh, HRIDA class of 2005, we've prepared our own statement, uh, which probably will be shared in an appropriate uh, um, uh, forum when there's more time you know, for, for people to listen to it or to have a look at it. Um, so for me, um, uh, I'll just mention that uh, I'll speak to the personal experiences, uh, of course, many of the things that Batulani have been spoken about um, by earlier speakers. Um, I was his classmate, and uh, uh, I could add that I was his desk mate. It's, the, it's like we're sitting shoulder to shoulder during the, the you know, the entire um, uh, six months at the University of Pretoria there for the first, first semester. 
and of course the second semester in Kambala together. Um, and, and of course, Mwiza will probably also add on to the reflections of his experience with him in, in Kambala. Um, I'm absolutely gutted, just like everybody else, uh, that um, um, a person like Tulani and his demeanor and his approach to uh, defending human rights uh, was a pacific one, uh, aggressive in its own sense, but largely uh, could be interpreted as, 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 as passive resistance, if you like, um, and that he should then uh, meet his end of days in a violent manner like this. Uh, it's something that is completely uh, opposite to what he represented. I have listened to some of the speakers from Swaziland. You've been having some meetings uh, online uh, speaking about him uh, being one of those people who would, in many cases, um, uh, explore an option where dialogue would be the order of the day instead of uh, you know taking the option of violence. So for me, to learn was uh, was 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 we 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 used to call him the native and you know native from Swaziland, and and, and the reason why we called him the native uh, in the class was be basically because of his um, his commitment. Uh, as Sabela said, his commitment to the liberation of the people of Swaziland. That's basically what he was thinking about. Everything he did, everything he spoke about, you know, you know, when you when you're sitting next to someone in a in the class and 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 someone is taking the lecture, you whisper to each other, you talk about your experiences in your own country. He was always talking about, you know, these good experiences are not there in Swaziland. When I go back, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. He was consumed about liberating his people from Swaziland. He was not thinking about anything else. And you could see his track record in terms of his uh, academic work, uh, whether it was dissertation, it was about Swaziland, whether it was a, a case study, it was about Swaziland. Um, and I'm told even the PhD was the it, it was writing at the time of uh, his passing, it was about Swaziland. His total commitment to Swaziland could not be matched. He was not thinking about anything else but to say, how best can I work and liberate uh, my people uh, in Swaziland? He was a traditional man, uh, as far as I could tell. as a very, very traditional man, um, talking about his traditions most of the time, what they, how they do things in Swaziland and so forth and so on. In some cases, because we're also sharing the same house, uh, cooking some, some, some meals. Of course, he was a very awful cooker, or cook, if I, if I should say that. But 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 you tried by all means to ensure that we 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 even had um, a version of of whatever I was cooking a meal the Swaz way, but also respecting even the 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 governance architecture of Swaziland as a country. His only disagreement was that the monarch must uh, move the days in in terms of accepting that uh, um, uh, people should live. Uh, their lives, you know, follow their cultural values, but must do so in a positive cultural context, so that you know harmful practices should be abandoned and so forth. That was his disagreement only. So he was a person that, uh, you know, as France and other speakers have said, um, a bit impatient. But even during our time, when a disagreement in class or when a disagreement with the administration, you know, when a student always one, you know, once in a while have disagreement, he was the last person to speak. And when he spoke, you know, people would listen, you know, to say, look, you know, Tulani said this, probably let's let's follow that. Why? Because he was also, you know, uh, much older than most of us in that in that class. So uh, one or the other, we respected him for his uh, uh, role as 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 an elder of the class, uh, but also give him direction and, uh, and and supervision in terms of social life and so on and so on. So. Um, I could say so many things because we, we lived most of the days together, playing soccer after school together, studying or memorizing certain things together because it was our life at, at, at the center at the time. And when he went to prison, I think I, I visited him once during one of his trials. I think Lloyd was also there and a few other colleagues also visited him and you know, tried to support him through the process. And we thought when he came back from prison, everything was over. Yeah, we thought if if you if if you had to die, probably you'd have died in prison. But he came out, and we thought the storm was over. Uh, but now we are quite gutted and surprised that uh, he has met his last days in such a violent way. But um, nonetheless, um, well, we continue to believe in his legacy. We continue to believe uh, 
uh, in the principles that it stood for. I would like to thank the sender through you know, Professor Filiune already told us that he is going to honor our colleague uh, through a lecture uh, that will immortalize its memory in our minds and we definitely participate in the support of that lecture, but also as a class we've committed ourselves to supporting his family for as much as we can and for as long as we can. Thank you very much and uh, let me leave the time for others to uh, come in and share the experiences. Thank you, moderator. Thank you, uh, Wiza. Um, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, afternoon, Professor Nkata and Professor Filiun uh, and all colleagues. Uh, greetings from Arusha, Tanzania. Um, like other speakers before me, it's a very somber occasion that we gathered for today uh, to commemorate the memory of our colleague, uh, Tulani, uh, who, like, like Teresaya said, was in our class of 2005. Um, Speaking for myself, uh, my acquaintance with Tulani would be described as a journey from South Street to, to Wandegea in Kampala. Those are familiar with Kampala will recall that Wandegea is that little town where Makerere University is. So uh, just to share a few things from my memory of our time together from South Street all the way to, to Kampala. So, on our way, let me just pick two examples. On our way to, to Kampala, uh, I think there was four or five of us, maybe six of us, uh, who were traveling together from Joburg to, to Kampala. And uh, when we got to the airport in Joburg, it turned out that our luggage was hopelessly overweight. Um, we tried to throw away things and all that, but we were still not able to meet the requirements of the airline. At that very moment, it was Tulani who offered to leave one of his bags behind and said he could survive on his little carry-on alone and make his, would be able to make his way around with whatever he had carried and uh, make do with what he would find in Kampala. So it was only because of Tulani's generosity and kind-headedness that all of us were able to put our bags on that plane and make it to, uh, and make it to, to Kampala with those bags. I think when you look, you look back over Tulani's life, I think, I think that very gesture that he, he made at Oratambo Airport that day epitomizes his willingness to make sacrifices for others. And I think from the class of 2005, there would be many examples that people would be able to point to, uh, to demonstrate uh, his, kind, his kind heartedness, his willingness to, uh, to take personal inconvenience uh, as, as long as he, as long as he was doing something to, to support uh, to support other people, in Kampala, just like we did in South Street, we had many afternoons together. Um, I think uh, uh, for 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 the boys who went to Kampala, there was four of us: uh, Tarisai, myself, Michelle, and Tulani. Uh, Tulani and me shared an apartment in in Kampala, so we had a lot of time together. He would tell me about what was happening in Swaziland. Uh, I also can't get, uh, by the way, I also can't get to calling the places Swatini yet, uh, but I, I'm still stuck with Swaziland. He would tell me what was going on in Swaziland and, and what he was doing with other people in Swaziland to try and uh, uh, agitate for uh, agitate for change. In December 2005, as we were preparing to go back to, 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 uh, to Pretoria for our graduation, I remember me and Tarisai uh, went with him to the airport because he left about six, seven days earlier. Uh, at the airport, just before he left, I, I spoke to him then. I was like, bruh, I know you're going back home. I know you're unhappy about a lot of things, but can you please take care? He laughed it off and said, I'll take care. I'll be fine. And we know uh, what happened to Tulani after that, the imprisonment. But where we meet over and over um, between 2005, uh, up to about 2017, I think, when I must have seen him last. Uh, and we would joke about how he was still, he was still okay, even though uh, going through difficult times routinely. But I, I think what he was saying to me then was that he knew the dangers of what he was doing in Eswatini, Swaziland. He, he knew what, uh, what, what could befall him. But I think his conviction and his belief, uh, especially in a more democratic Swaziland uh, still spurred him 
to ignore the personal peril that he was putting himself in as long as there was probably going to be uh, a better and more democratic uh, Swaziland. I think, and I believe most firmly, Tulani has been martyred, but history has its own way of dealing with these things. And I, it might not be today that he will be recognized, but when the final books of the history of the democratization of Swaziland, which I believe will happen, are written, I think there will be space and there'll be plenty of space uh, to write in Tulani's, uh, Tulani's name. Um, Tulani has paid, as uh, one of our colleagues said, the ultimate price for his belief. We hope, of course, that there will be investigations and we might probably get to know what exactly happened to him, even though it's a forlorn hope uh, in Swaziland. But uh, I think for, for, for the rest of us, uh, and as Frank said earlier, for the rest of us, perhaps the least we could do is to keep pushing in the same direction that Tulani was, uh, Tulani was pushing from wherever we are and in whatever ways uh, we want to do that. Um, thank you so much, colleagues. Um, that's all I would like to share with us for now. Thank you very much, Muiza. Um, Christian? Christian Karuka, are you there? Yes. Good afternoon, uh, Prof and the moderator and uh, colleagues. Uh, I'm struggling to express my feelings uh, as I was uh, Tulani's classmate and also happened to be his uh, housemate in uh, Pretoria. I'll just share with you some of the memories as far as uh, we are discussing on narrating uh, our friend Tulani. Uh, the, uh, though there was no uh, doubt about his commitment uh, for human rights and uh, democracy in Swaziland. But what I came to, to realize, he was not, he kept, though he was uh, determined to fight for democracy and human rights in Swaziland, he, he, at the same time, he, he was also sensitive uh, about uh, other country, African countries. It was all, as I remember when we came from our field trip, uh, Tulani was part of the team uh, which went to, to Rwanda and I was a, uh, part of the team which went to Sierra Leone. And then when we went back to Victoria yeah. after the field trip, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember uh, the second day after our long trip, he came to my, my room and then he told me that he had spent uh, just one minute. Uh, uh, Davina, can you please mute Adrian? Adrian, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I muted him. Thank you, Professor Nkata. As I was saying, after our field trip, I remember Tulani came to see me in my room and he, he told me that he had spent a couple, couple of uh, sleepless nights in, while he was in Chigali. And then I asked him why. And then he said, we visited uh, the survivor of the genocide against the Tutsis. We also, uh, we also managed to meet some of the people, the prisoners at different uh, category of people in Rwanda. And then he told me he was struggling to understand how a human being would kill another one based on these kind of uh, stereotypes, how people could really be involved in that kind of uh, killing. As he, he told me this, he did not believe in that kind of stereotype as some will be told otherwise short, as he said, it, among his family, you could find short and tall people. And then he, he really was struggling to understand what really happened to Rwanda. And I told him, yes, as a human being who is who's sane, will never understand what happened to Rwanda. And then after, I also remember, again, we used to go and play football after our classes. 
And I remember one day I went to see him in his room and uh, he was watching the TV. And then I started joking with him and asking if we could go to play soccer. And then he said, no question. Today I'm uh, watching, the, there was a case uh, against Shabik Sheikh in that time. And then he told me, this case against Shabik Sheikh, it's a, for me, it's not an ordinary case. It's a democracy and the rule of law, which, is, which are at stake in South Africa, as far as uh, democracy is concerned in South Africa. And then he said today, I'm dedicating to, to this case. I'm going to devote all my time watching, uh, following closely this, this case. For me, you really epitomize what we were studying in South Africa as uh, the, our program uh, on human rights democratization in Africa, not only thinking about our own countries, but look at Africa as a continent. Also, probably this could be on a very light note. I remember one day I found him in the kitchen and then he was coincidentally, he was cooking beans and I also I was also cooking beans. And then he, he was pouring some oil and some uh, mix it with some onions. And then I say, you native from Switzerland, let me show you the Rwandan way. So I had to fry my onions and beans and then mix it with some uh, ingredients. And then when he tested, he said, oh, this is the Rwandan way. I think I should also shift to the Rwandan way. That was the way to, for me, he was ready to embrace also other people's culture. Though he believed in his own culture, but at the same time, he was quite uh, open-minded to, to other culture. And uh, lastly, I remember when I met him in Banjul, probably five or six years after our graduations. And then when he looked at me, we, he said, the native from Rwanda, I guess you have retired from playing football. And, and then we cracked jokes and then I say, why? He said, you have put on some weight. And I told him, yes, even professional football, at some time they have to retire. He said, yes, but for as far as defending human rights and democracy is concerned, you don't retire for that specific uh, ambition or activity. That's what I remember about him, his dedication to human rights and democracy, not only in his, his own home uh, country, but also he was also uh, devoted to human and democracy across uh, the globe. We'll miss him, but his uh, memory will live with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, as you said, I think a lot of very personal reflections, uh, but this is really the purpose of this gathering. So thank you, Christian, for your reflections. I think I see one hand up, uh, Badaru, and then after that, I will give the floor to Lloyd to lead us on uh, maybe more concrete suggestions on what, how we can memorialize um, Tulani's legacy. Uh, Badaru? Uh, you're muted. We cannot hear you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> uh, I greetings to everyone who's on this uh, Zoom call. I, along with the others, uh, what Teresa and Christina and Wiz have said about Tulani, I was in the 2005 class, and I was actually in the same clinic, uh, clinical group as to Tulani we were. And one of my strongest memories of Tulani was how much of a hard worker he was. Because we, we had this assignment that we needed to turn in. It was about the, I think it was the proposed merger of the African Court of Human Rights with, a, uh, with the African Court and of Justice. And there was a deadline by which we had to submit it. 
and it was uh, it was a lot of work, a lot of nights of working. And I recall Tulani will tell us to come to his room and do the work. And going through it, we would all be so tired, but he would keep on working. It would give us food. And I remember many times I would even sleep up and then I would wake up and I would see Tulani still working. And that was the passion that he carried into everything he did. I, he was such a formidable person to relate with because you sometimes would want to contrast his very soft, he was soft spoken. And sometimes you would, you would not imagine that someone who was so temperate in, in character would be such a strong, formidable opponent of injustice. I recall that about him. Tunani was, he was a hard worker. And sometimes I would be in awe because I remember I used, I had a friend in Swaziland and Tulani would offer me free rides from, from Victoria to, to Swaziland and we would drive together and it would bring me back. You know, I would go for a weekend. And it was sometimes when I got to the border and I see how the people, the ordinary people related with him, especially when we get into Manzini or we're driving from Bambani. And I would say, Tulani, your people love you. It's, 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 it's horrendous to think what has happened to him, but I do hope that this does not just go down as just somebody who was slain and nothing came out of it. Because he was one who was a true Pan-African. He really wanted to see change in his country. And I do hope that as we all talk about him, his passion, his drive, his hard work, that something comes out and rises up in Swaziland in Eswatini and that justice is served not only for Tulani, but for the people of Swaziland or well, Eswatini as well. Thank you.